Well, 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 welcome to the Bababa show, the show that will break down the wall between man and PC. It will welcome to the Bababa show, the show that will break down the wall between man and PC. It will demystify computers because computers are an appliance. Computers are very much like the cars used to be with the Model T and the Model A. We're now moving into a stage where they're like the Model A, they're being mass produced. There are around 250 million computers right now in the world. They expect another 25 to 50 million computers in the following year. One of the very close similarities are they're not very reliable. And if you own a computer, you need to know someone who knows how to work with it. We're moving towards icons, whether we want to or not. We can have any color Model A as long as it's black. If a car has bugs, it's a lemon. If a computer has bugs, it makes no difference. Something that's a little bit different, though, is that one person can manufacture a $20,000 PC in their own house. There is no barrier to entry like there was in the auto industry, where you needed a plant that might cost $100 million to make a $20,000 car. Anybody can hang a shingle and be a manufacturer of computers. But what we'd like to do here is cover some of the topics that lead man into, the, into working with a computer. So today on our show, we have two very, very preeminent computer people, uh, Florida Taylor and Melissa Perry. Uh, Melissa, how do you use computers? I use computers every day. I'm an accountant and I work with financial spreadsheets, and I'm also hooked up through an emulation board to a mainframe system. Gee, that's very interesting. What, what kind of computer do you have? I have an IBM. 486. And what's inside that machine? A 486 processor, so it runs quite quickly. And that's important to you? It's very important to me. My job is very demanding. If I need to print something quickly, I need it immediately. And why is that? Because I'm under deadlines that require immediate feedback. So it's a very serious thing to you, isn't it? It can be very serious. That's good. Uh, Florida, how do you use a computer? Well, I drive my car every day, and that's work, working by computer, although I'm not using the keyboard itself. Uh, Does but, your car have a keyboard in it? Uh, not a manual keyboard, no. No. But it, when I turn on the engine, it does work by computer. And then I use my microwave, and that is based on computer knowledge as well. So do you have a computer in your house, a PC of any sort? No, I don't have a PC as such. Do you ever get to use one? Uh, occasionally, I do. Well, that's terrific. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, what is that occasion that you have to use one for? Oh, I play games on it on my daughter's PC. Oh, what kind of games? Well, especially the Price is Right and what have you. And, and what kind of games do you play on yours, Melissa? I play solitaire with my mouse. Oh, you do? Does your boss know that? Only after 6.30. Oh. <laughs> well, now that you've uh, bored us all, when you have an Ethernet network, make sure you terminate both ends of the cable. Um, I'd like to bring up a couple of things and maybe ask our panel here to, to talk about them with it. One of the things, one of the things that we had um, recently, uh, now you need to go the other way with my crypt sheets, okay? You're turning the pages the wrong way. Turn them back this way. Yeah. One of the things that we recently had in Atlanta, Georgia was the Convex Computer Show. Uh, at that show, there were about 3,600 vendors and 3,600 booths, everybody trying to sell whatever they could to the public. There were a lot of uh, new products that are, uh, they're telling us that we need, and there were about 140,000 people that came to this show here in Atlanta. I'd like to touch on some of the, to me, what were some of the more important aspects of the uh, One of the neatest things that I saw was a virtual reality helmet. It's available for about $12,000, and you sit there with this big, ugly helmet on your head. And um, whenever you turn your head, you get to race a car down this really cheap-looking game, and you get to race the car, and whichever way you turn, then you get that view that was in there. So for $12,000, you could add that to your Nintendo system, and you would have virtual reality. The other thing they had was video conferencing. What is video conferencing? Video conferencing is when you're talking to a computer, and on the other side, somebody is eavesdropping on you, and then, uh, oh. you're, on the other side, they're also talking, you're eavesdropping on them. Yes. So the video conferencing that they had there, uh, if you had it in the same building and it was connected over the same close-knit cable, it looked kind of like a TV set inside your, your computer. 
If you were doing it from one building to the next over telephone lines, it looked like some of the lousiest television that you've ever seen. Uh, so as far as video conferencing is concerned, once again, we'll throw out the disk drive on that one. I don't think it's ready yet. Uh, another thing that really looked nice at Comdex and I think was doing a good job and might prove helpful to some people because I know, Florida, you are, uh, were a uh, music teacher, is that they had some really good music editing software. How about that? And the way it worked is you would play on your keyboard on and piano keyboard. or whatever, right. and then automatically it would just take it into a score, and from that score you could print it out and everybody else could take your music and they could, could play it. That seemed to, to really work well. Uh, once you had it, you could do a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things with it. Okay, so you could write out your chords and everything. Chords, everything. Uh, you could change time signatures with it. You could um, shift things. Um, you know, it could give you as much detail as you wanted to on it. Mm -hmm. So that looked pretty good. They also had a real nifty little device if you're a guitar player out there that you could just hook onto any guitar. It had two little suction cups and just popped it on there. Then you play your guitar and that took whatever played out of your guitar and turned it into MIDI that went into your computer for the same kind of scoring. So that was pretty interesting. Interesting, I should say. Did it have defaults that you had to pick the time signature to start with? No, you, you know, you could just pick any time signature. You could do anything. And if you're a musician, the packages seem to be pretty interesting, and they seem to be pretty easy to use um, to do it. But in this world right now, one of the problems is we have those kind of uses for the computer, but there's probably such a small percentage of people who would ever want to use those mm -hmm. that, um, it's kind of like, so what? It's kind of neat to walk by it and see it, but we don't, in our day-to-day -day lives, use anything day. like that. Or the video conferencing, for that matter. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. You have to remember, a PC is only a machine. If it does not work every time, it is not a reliable machine at all. To, to move on, there were several other very, very interesting things that were... Um, at Comdex. One of them was this nice hot and cold bag. Oh like boy, that's bag. interesting. See, very nice hot and cold bag. All you had to do was go look at a couple of uh, product presentations for the uh, vendor, and then you could have the hot and cold bag. Hmm, uh, I'd like to have one of those, wouldn't you? One of the nicest things that they're doing now is that they're taking um, software, ch uh, children's reading programs, and they're putting them on a CD, and that's probably the best use of CD so far to date has come on children's um, learning tools. Uh, there's a company there that was there that was giving away free CDs that you could pop into your um, multimedia computer and you could play things with it. Well, what is a multimedia computer? A multimedia computer is a computer that has a sound card and has um, a video card so that you can watch a, a CD player in it so that you can watch a movie while you're listening to sound. So if okay. you get an encyclopedia and you want to look at a bird, where you can see the bird fly and you can hear what the bird would sound like. Now, there's one thing to keep in mind with most of the multimedia today, what they call multimedia, is that the pictures suck. They're terrible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're getting there and you had to start somewhere, so naturally we had a Model A, so imagine when we get up to having, uh, like, really fancy cars like we have today, um, you know, pictures eventually are going to look very good over them. But right now, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you better like it a lot, you better want it. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of the other neat things was that they had, was um, we got three card Monty giveaways. Oh, uh, excuse boy. me, Jeff, can you come help me with this? See, there are three cards here. We have uh, the two tens and the king, and I'm going to ask my uh, incredible assistant here to pick the middle card, the king, from the middle here. Okay, now show me the king. Oh my gosh, it's not the king. Can you believe that? Three card Monty. That was a really good, <laughs> thank you very much. That was a very, very good uh, So, Buttons, more buttons. Let's see, what else do we, oh my gosh, I'm going to save the best for last, huh? this is the biggest, and th for this you had to actually go watch a, put on these funky glasses and go watch a 3D movie, which was kind of neat where you like toured around America or something like that, I'm going to try mm. and open this so I don't get into any trouble, but we're going to open this and inside, so this is very much bad luck, so, and if any of you want to turn off your TV sets now, go ahead and do that because I'm going to open umbrella inside, uh, we're going to turn this so you can't oh, see, careful. there it goes, that's neat. Very nice umbrella for everybody That's to see. Neat. Don't you think? That's One of the neat. greatest events at Comdex was getting the umbrella. You saw like thousands of people walking around with, on this. You had to wait in line. You had to get tickets to go to the show. Everything else. Last but not least, you know, because there's all kinds of problems with computers. They have bugs and they have all kinds of accidents uh, with the computers. We had a company who wanted to uh, cover access control, disaster recovery, and antivirus and copy protection. So they were giving away this nice little device that uh, I'm sure all of you have seen right here. If any of you uh, in the crew need this after the show, just come see me. I've got a <laughs>
How about that? And uh, oh, oh yeah. And last but not least, a very nice uh, uh, bag made of sturdy, durable cotton that was given away by a vendor who no one knew what they did. People walked by the booth going, "What do they do? Who are they?" And they were giving out away one of the best bags there. So I kept this. I brought it every day. I kept rolling it for John, taking it home. Oh, anyway, nice. that concludes our our uh, Comdex portion of the show. To run Windows, you know you need at least four megabytes of RAM. If you are smart, you will use eight, or maybe more. Naturally, the more you use, the better you're going to come out, huh? So what's your name? My name's Jeff Clark. And how old are you? I'm 11 years old. And how long have you used computers? I've used computers for about eight or nine years. Do your parents know you use a computer? Yes, they do. Why'd you start? Um, my stepfather's really into computers, and he, um, he started, he showed me about computers, and I thought it was really cool, so I liked it. So, uh, what do you use computers for? Um, I usually play games on them, and so, sometimes if the teacher asks for a report, I'll do a report on there. Um, when did you first start using the computers? When I was about three. And what did you use them for? I used it for a report. My teacher asked me to do a report. And what, what was that report on? Oh, not my Oh, man. Who did? Who asked you to do a report? <laughs> Nobody asked me to do a report. So you just did it just because you wanted to? <laughs> no. You're a good kid. <laughs> you know, I bet you a lot of teachers would. So are you a computer no. nerd? <laughs> not my teacher. Uh, are you a computer nerd? No, I'm not. Are you, are, do you like play other sports and stuff too? Yes, I do. I play soccer, basketball, and baseball. So do lots of the kids who play soccer, basketball, and baseball use computers? Not really, unless they're teacher. <laughs> unless they're teacher. So uh, do you ever use play games? When you play games on a computer, what do you do on them? <laughs> what kind of games? Um, usually CD-ROM games. Yeah, and what do you think about CD-ROM games? I think it's awesome. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, what kind of games do you like the most on them? I like, um, there's this game, it's Star Wars, I think. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, it's on the CD-ROM and you have to fly this jet around and it's, I like doing that. Do you, do you use um, a mouse or a joystick or anything like that with you it? You can use a mouse, a joystick, or the keyboard. Uh-huh. It's got closed captioning, it's really cool. Closed captioning? Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, what do you do on the computer? Play games. Play games. Now, when you do them for schoolwork and you do them for reports, what do you do? How do you work with the computer then? Um, I usually go into Windows uh -huh. and I'll go into something and I'll type it up. And then what? And then I'll print it out. And does the computer always work just right for you and everything or what? No. What happens? <laughs> Sometimes you might have a word spelled wrong. Yeah. And so, if it's a really good computer, um, it will have spell check, and you can check your words. So do you like that? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a lot easier. Helps you get good grades. Yeah. Yeah. If you could say anything at all to the other millions and millions of children out there that are watching this show about computers, what would you tell them? Get a C get a CD ROM. Get a CD ROM. Yeah, and get a lot of games for it. <laughs> yeah, and get play. a lot of. All a multimedia PC is, is a PC with a sound card and a CD-ROM drive. Sound is pretty good, but the movies aren't too cool at all. Not at all. Welcome to the interesting part of the show where we attempt to explore what actually is inside of those boxes that sit on your desk. We have all kinds of things. People say, well, we have a monitor, we have a keyboard. You're pretty f familiar with that. We might have a mouse or something like that. But what actually is inside hey, of that kid machine? Before, he was well, we're going to put a machine money. together today and oh, show you what nerd. actually oh, goes man. in there. They usually start with a case <laughs> like kid. this. I like the case. Inside of the case, good, we put a motherboard. And as you can see, that's, that's what it's called, a motherboard. It really doesn't have any children whatsoever, so I don't know why they called it a motherboard. 
But we want to make sure we handle these parts pretty, pretty this well. This guy's got to go. <laughs> I'm with you. Sure I just got to I can't believe so it. So what you have to do is rub <laughs> your feet on the carpet. He's got to just And then just touch something like it because it might mess it up. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a motherboard. This is an old style motherboard that has different kinds of slots. Now you'll hear all this jargon in a computer store about MCI, Visa, AT bus, 16-bit, 8-bit, whatever it is. Well, it's a whole bunch of bit of who cares what, you know, actually. But real quickly, what 8-bit means is that you've got eight different pathways for information to go. So if you're at the grocery store and there's eight checkout counters and there's six other people working at the grocery store and they're not doing anything and the line is like 20 long, if they would go to 16 checkout counters, then everything would move a lot faster, right? So if you have I eight think bit, this guy's been eight eating too much at the grocery store. He needs to take 16, a break with that twice thing. As many. If you have 32 bit, then that means there's 32 different checkout counters, and then there's 64 bit, which was used Somebody to check this now, dude out. Uh, moving that. Anyway, to make a long story short, 8 bit doesn't move as much information as 16 bit. And the bigger the number, the better, kind of like whatever. Okay. When you look at your motherboard, though, you're going to see. Where's a pointing tool? Okay. When hey, you he's talking your about your mother. He's talking about right when nobody here. talks about my mother. These smaller ones, those are called 8-bit slots. So naturally, you need to get a card. See, if the card looks like this, and you try to put it in an 8-bit slot, it's not going to go in the slot because it's a little too big, right? Hey, turn so the music back up. Oh, I can't take this an guy. An 8-bit slot that goes in, because let's see the card. See how they, like, line up. Wait, see, if you, wait. If you take the card and you kind of put this over... Hey, what's he trying to go with okay, that? See, hammer? Now, get that hammer out of here, buddy. So that's an 8-bit slot, okay? So you want to make sure, since these are, um, anyway, back to this. I, what, so now uh, we know about all that stuff 8-bit. Yeah, we really do, uh-huh. When you buy a CD-ROM drive, make sure that it is at least a double-speed one. Otherwise, the pictures will look really bad, and you don't need that. Not at all. So now we have to figure out what do we have to pay. Hey, that lady really seems to, to know what she's talking well, about. This guy. Let me get a monitor. Hey, where'd you, you get your clothes? The plugs into. Two guys. Naturally, the card the monitor okay, plugs Mark. into is usually even more important than the monitor because the card determines how clearly the monitor is, how much resolution the monitor has. So this is a how clearly VGA it is? What do you and think, what does huh? VGA stand for? What is that? Well, I have two lovely assistants here who are helping me. Hey, VGA uh, stands for Video Show Graphics girls. Array, buddy. Once again, we have Melissa and Florida, the Bubba Show Girls. And they're going to assist me in, in making sure that I get this right. So now we take, for the monitor, a VGA card, OK? And can you please point out what a monitor looks like for these shows here? OK, great. So we want to make sure that we put this in. So we're going to take this, and we're going to um, put this into. Now, it really doesn't matter what the slide is. And sometimes people say that you have to be careful on these. Well, you, you kind of do if you use uh, I suggest nothing more than an 8-ounce hammer when you're going to do this. Okay, so now we have a monitor card, but also you have to have uh, a keyboard so that we can type into it. So now we got a way of getting stuff in with a keyboard, and we have a monitor so we can see what's going on. But what you want to do is you also want to have some way of saving the information that you typed in. Okay, so what we use there are, we use two, several different devices. Can you hand me a floppy drive? This is a three and a half inch floppy drive, and that's a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. The five and a quarter inch is old. We don't want to use these anymore. Okay, the three and a half is better. Uh, it's, it's a lot better. It's rigid. It doesn't break as easy. And it holds more information. So we, we kind of want to use these. So those go into the, the machine right here. We just throw these out. Why don't, don't you just there. tell so them new technology? Just like the video card, we have to have another card in our machine that plugs into the floppy drive. So we have to get a floppy drive controller card. And, and this happens to be one right here. Now, that naturally, this is an 8-bit floppy drive controller card. Um, so we want to make sure we plug this in. So now we can put this Getting into confused, an 8-bit slot. Buddy. And uh, for this, I think I'm going to use uh, my special tool. Uh, That's the one he card. used on his uh, brother when he got mad at him. We have this card in here, but we also have the old floppy drive that we have to somehow get the two of them. We can't just lay it on top. How does this talk to this? So, what do we have to do? Well, what are you Don't let like this guy near your PC. Here? We have to take one of these cables. 
Yes, thank you. I try to figure it out. All right, well, that's, that's okay. So we got to take these, and these cables get plugged in to here, and they get plugged in here, and then they talk to each other along the cable. Does everybody see that? Very detailed, very complicated that you have to plug uh, something in. Between. Gee, what are you, a rocket scientist or something? Okay, so now we've handled that. But a floppy drive doesn't hold much information. You say it's one megabyte of information. Well, when you want to know, like, roughly how much that means, you want that one. a full-page letter is about 2,000 bytes of information. So one megabyte, well, you do the division. So if we want to hold more information, we use a hard drive. And this is called a fixed drive, hard drive, whatever. This is an older style drive. These drives used to cost a couple thousand dollars. Uh, now they're li a lot less expensive, but every machine needs to have one. And nowadays, if you're going to buy a new machine, make sure that you get one that's at least 200 megabytes and preferably 500 megabytes. The video card and monitor might be a more important than a fast machine. One thing you have to do is make sure you get the best monitor and video card you can find. And the main thing, the best one that you can afford. That makes all the difference in the world. This is a pretty good job. Yeah, I think this is okay. We'll, we'll use this one. So the same story on this one. We want to just stick this inside. Could you stick this inside the uh, machine really quick? Sure. And we also need a fixed disc controller card, which we will now put into our machine. Very, very carefully adjusting it and then gently tapping with the X to make sure that it goes in properly. Okay, so now we've got a fixed disc controller card and we've got a hard, uh, floppy disc controller card. We've got a place to plug our monitor in so we can plug it in right back here. So we've got a monitor in here and everything else. So what's your name? Jessica. And do you use computers? Yes, a lot. How much? Tons of times. Do you like using computers? They're very fun. Well, how do you use a computer? What do you do with it? So you play games and you do work and all that stuff. Uh, what kind of games? Well, see, CD games. They're really fun. What makes them so much fun? There's animals, cats, they're really fun. Even koalas are hippos. Koalas are hippos? Mm hmm And what kind of work do you do over the computer? Play work. What kind of play work? Do you write stories with them? No. Mm -hmm. What about at school? Do you use them to write stories at school? No, play with them. There's like these games that, um, they're really fun. So you don't use them in school in the computer lab? Yeah. So what do you what kind of work do you I do write in school? Stories. I listen to cat, dog, and fish, all that stuff. What's cat, dog, and fish? C A T D O G F A. I mean F I S H. And so is that good to learn how to spell? Yeah. I'm on number five right now. Uh, do the other children like to use them at school too? Yeah, most of them. Do you uh, have your own diskettes or anything? Do you know what a diskette is? Do you know what makes a computer go? No. Do you know what's inside of a computer? No. What if I told you there was a little man inside of a computer? <laughs> what would you think of that? Um, pretty weird. And that that man had a dog and a fish and a cat inside the computer. Would that be good? Really weird. So, are computers kind of hard, or are they stupid? Are they good? Are they bad? They're really fun, but sometimes when I don't see, I press the button, it doesn't move. What, what happens? Uh, see, I went to the paint where you paint things. And I pressed the button and it didn't work. And I was like, I kept on pressing it and it wouldn't work. Why do you think it didn't work? I don't know. Was the computer broken? No. I used it right before it. 
So sometimes it, when you press the button, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So did that make you very mad? Mm -hmm. How mad did you get? Mad. Did you scream? No. But other kinds of things happen on the computer. Well, nothing really except for watching my dad work. Oh, what does he do with the computer? Works all day and all night. So, thank you for being on our show. We really appreciate it. I hope you come back again and visit us. The end. <laughs> what else are we missing? A power supply. My, you know, I'm more impressed with you every day. Can't hardly uh, do it without it, can you? No. So now we have to have a way of um, plugging this in. So you get this little thing with all these octopus cables here, and you take this and you stick it inside your machine. It usually sits right, be very gentle, and then it takes these cables and you plug them in, in here, like right into the slots right here, and um, it's kind of good. So we plug them into our little white slot. So now we've got. That's in here, everything's fine. So now we've got power going to it. However, we forgot one thing, and this is the most commonly forgotten item. Everybody always forgets the power cord. Get a video board with accelerated pixel interpolation for displaying a full motion video. Didn't know I knew about that, did you? Yeah. What, are you kidding me? So anyway, no, we don't want that anyway. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, communicate to the outside world. We want to get on the internet or some of the other stuff that people talk about. Um, so in order to do that, we need a modem. So what we're going to do is if, if my lovely assistant, Melissa, would care to, she could hand me the last card. It's a modem card. See You're if right, you can it find is a modem it. card. She found it. It's a modem card. And They're lovely, all right, too. It's the telephone system and go in and talk to other bulletin board systems. If you notice, there are two little phone jacks here. Can you see that? Okay, I'm glad you nice saw Nice tie, buddy. Okay, so then we want to put that into the machine as well, being very, very careful. And, um, oh, wait, here's another power supply. So now when we plug all this stuff in, when we plug all the monitors in, the keyboard gets plugged in right over here. Okay, then we take the monitor, we plug it in, and we have now successfully and dramatically put together our first PC. Make sure your new system has at least a 16550 UART or upgrade your system by adding a serial port with a coprocessor. That's needed. Did you plug it into the wall? No, because everybody always forgets that. So. Anyway, um, that's it. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, rap all, baby. Uh-huh.